Hello and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here and welcome back to my studio. Today I'm going to be showing you how I painted this Scottish mountain scene with a beautiful still lock and sort of stormy clouds blowing across behind the mountains. It's inspired by a photograph that I found on Pixabay, which I have simplified and just used the bare bones of it in my painting. I'll leave a link to the photograph in the description below. So the first thing I do is look carefully at the photograph and decide what are the important parts that I need in my painting. And then I sketch those out really simply. So I've just got a few distant mountains, not as many as in the photograph, a couple of trees, making sure that my headlands stand out nicely and then just a little bit of foreground, not too much, uh, very simple. I'm using Milford cold press watercolour paper. It's taped to my board with ordinary decorators masking tape and my board at an angle of about 20 to 30 degrees. I'm going to paint the first layer wet in wet. So I'm using my one and a half inch Princeton Aqua Elite Mottler wash brush, any wash brush will do, to wet the paper all over. Just allowing the water to soak into the paper a little bit, there's not too much water on there, just enough to make it sort of fairly slick so that I can get a nice softly diffused sky. This is raw sienna and then I shall work some Payne's grey in and around it to create my clouds and then work down the painting to create my lake. and then working some sap green into the wet paper so I get some softly diffused canopies for my trees, leaving plenty of sort of sky holes behind so that we can see the mountain through the trees. A sweep of the same color across the land and then adding in some raw sienna and burnt sienna into the land here and there just to give up the look of those weeds and plants that are growing up in the foreground.
I'm working fairly quickly while the paper's still wet, um, trying to keep the lake nice and flat by using horizontal brush strokes. My three quarter inch flat brush does a really good job of this. I'm trying to get some differentiation in the tonal values from light to mid value across the water so that it looks as if the light is hitting the water and reflecting. Now back in with a medium mop with some darker green, I've mixed a bit of Payne's grey into it and a touch of perylene green into the sap green. And I'm just dropping some darker, richer paint into the canopies while they're still damp so I get a bit of extra value in there. And then using my palette knife, I'm scraping through the damp paint and to produce some branches and tree trunks. That'll give me just a few highlights so that when I come and paint my tree branches and tree trunks in later, I will have something to work around. You can, of course, leave this stage out if it's not a technique that you like. You can wait until everything's dry, then paint in all your branches. And just before I leave it to dry, I've washed out my flat brush and squeezed all the water out of it so it's just damp. And I'm going to lift out um, a light line across the base of each of the mountains. And that will just give me a little highlight on the water and will help again with the effect of light on the water. And then I've got a couple of sort of little marks happening across the tape there. I'm just going to smudge those with my finger, soften them back just a little bit. And I think now I'm going to leave it all to dry. So here's the dry painting and I just want to sort of point out a couple of things to you. Um, just on the edge of the water, uh, where I painted wet in wet. I've got some little blooms of paint which look like bushes and shrubs and grasses just growing up from the edge of the lock. A wonderful happy accident. Watercolour has painted that for me so I won't need to do much more to that. So I'm now going to add my first wet on dry layer which is why I'm using nice rich wet paint onto the dry painting so I'll get harder edges the paint won't soften and diffuse it'll stay where I put it and I'm going to paint in my nearest mountain I've mixed up a sort of greenish brown here and I'm going to paint in my mountain following my faint pencil lines that I can still see through the sky wash I'll bring it as far as my tree canopies and then I'll negatively paint around the tree canopies so that I can have a little bit of the mountain peeping through those softly diffused trees.
adding just a few suggestions of detail to the foreground now. Not too much, just enough to balance the painting and to create the illusion. I shall add a little bit of um, tonal value across the foreground, but not too much, just enough to lead the eye into the rest of the painting. And once I'm happy with the foreground, then I'll mix up a light grey using my green to which I've added some Payne's grey, a little bit of uh, burnt sienna, a bit of raw sienna and really sort of plenty of water to make it fairly pale. I'm going to paint in the distant mountain. My first mountain, the nearest one, is still wet, so I'm not going to paint the middle mountain yet until everything's dry. But I'm just going to get this light grey mountain in first um, to give me some aerial perspective. And then once everything's dry, I'll be able to come back and put in that last mountain. Making sure that I don't paint over the light water line that I lifted out from the wet in wet wash. And then just etching a few lighter grasses through that um, damp paint there and then I'll use a damp fan brush just to drag up some of the paint as well to give me some extra texture. And I like the look of that, so I'm going to dip into a little of my paint and bring up a little bit of that same texture under the tree using raw sienna and burnt sienna. Just making sure I don't overdo it, but it is nice to have that little bit of texture suggested in the foreground to help lead the eye into the painting. Now I need to leave this to dry completely. As soon as it's dry, then I can continue with the painting. I can paint in the middle mountain and I can do some work on my trees. So again, using my size 14 round brush with a good point and the same green mix, but this time with more raw sienna um, and a little bit of burnt sienna, just to sort of um, lighten it up so it's not as dark as the mid-ground mountain. Maybe a little bit of Payne's grey as well, just to desaturate those colours.
And now that my mountains are done, I'm going to build up my tree canopies on these two trees, which are the main point of interest that lead us across to the mountains and then the sky. I'm working around the paint that's already there. I want some of that showing through because those layers are what's going to give me shape and form. Just sort of working around the edges, getting in some darker values. working around the marks that I scraped with the palette knife earlier into the damp paint and putting in a few sort of dots of paint here and there for some slightly ragged edges to the trees. This is my size 2 Pro Art Rigger and using a mixture of sepia, Payne's Grey with a little bit of um, burnt sienna in it. I'm going to paint my tree trunks and my branches. Again, making sure I paint around the marks that I etched in earlier with the palette knife so that I get a variety of values, the light hitting the trunks and branches in places. I'm using the side of the rigger brush to drag up just a little bit of um, shadow underneath the trees, not too much. And then just back into the tree canopy for just a little bit more detail. So stepping back every now and again, now and again, just to have a little look and see how it's looking as a whole. And I think that's the painting just about done. What I'm going to do now is remove the tape, my favourite part, and have a look and see how the painting looks with that paint covered tape removed. It allows us to look at it with fresh eyes and we can see if we need to do anything else to the painting. And I've just noticed a little sort of white patch in the canopies of the trees that draws the eye a bit too much. Um, that I must have just missed. So I'm going to paint over that, blend it into the rest of the canopy and any other little areas that might need a slight amount of adjustment. And because the tree canopies are still damp in places, it gives me the chance to just scrape a few more paler highlights through some of the darker patches, again to increase the highlights on the branches and just add a little bit more shape and form to the trees. 
and I'm happy with that. Here's the finished painting. I think it evokes sort of late spring, early summer day, um, especially up in Scotland where those stormy clouds and rain showers can just spring up out of nowhere. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the demo helpful. If you did, please leave us a like and why not consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. It's free to do and it really helps with our reach. And thank you very much to everybody that supports us both on Patreon. We really do appreciate you. And if you'd like to support the channel, then please follow the links below. Many thanks again. Take care and happy painting. Bye.